Right. Uh, well, while this is just coming up here, it's, it's the PC. It's just a <laughs> Windows netbook one. Um, I'll just explain a bit of background of what I was, what my primary interest. Well, I was a technician in primary schools, um, sort of Lancashire, like and I ended up getting involved with teaching basic ICT to kids. You know, well, I'm not a teacher, but um, obviously I know about computers. And uh, one of the things I used to do was use this lovely piece of stuff, this box here, which is a lovely box, kitty safe, outputs on it, connected to LEDs, connected to motors, inputs on it, um, and children could program um, sequences on this um, piece of hardware and software, and great. But the software using it is all flowchart, flowchart oriented. I'll show you when it when this eventually gets up and going. Just takes about another half hour before it finishes moving in. Those things that I really shouldn't have bothered with. Um, and then it was great, but it was hard work, and so you could see some kids the barrier to entry, as I call it, on using the flow charting software was, was tricky to use. Along came Scratch a few years ago. I oh, love Scratch. Scratch is just great. Now Anyone can program. Uh, hands up if you programmed in Scratch. Okay, hands up for those who haven't programmed but have heard of it and know what, it, know what we're talking about. Right, that's okay. Who hasn't got a clue? Oh. He's, he's, he's on the list again. <laughs> so I'll quickly show you Scratch to show you where I'm at. So, obviously the Pi's come along, and the Pi will run, comes with Scratch, you know, built into your image that you can just buy off the internet, <laughs> ready made for you, okay, and even I didn't have to compile it on it, I just ran it as well. So, um, and what the Scratch in the Linux, in, on the Pi, is exactly the same as the uh, scratch that you see here on the PC. And what I used to do as a good exercise introduction, year six children would say, right, let's do some traffic lights, go into scratch. Paint, you make a traffic light up. I'm gonna make this <coughs> We don't have time to do all that. <coughs> Give ourselves a red light. Yeah, you might think another red light. What you're doing is mad. Okay? But it's sense to this. Because what Scratch could do, it has this concept. Let me get rid of the cat. Scissors to cut. I mean, this is the sort of thing that's dead easy for the kids to use. So you've got them there, you have a concept of costumes. You copy that to. If it's five, you need a car remember. Edit that one. And then just simply. Ourselves a red light. Should have had one I prepared earlier, but I didn't. <laughs> to get rid of the red light. Ourselves an amber light. Hopefully, you know what? I don't have to go on, but I can produce the red, the green, the amber, and all the different things. And one of the things with Scratch is dead easy to do. Your scripts. One of the things you have looks. Next costume. So if you click on that, it just goes to the next costume. So if I mean, I could make it that when I control statements here, where the green flag is clicked, that's like the start key, switch to costume number one, and then we could have it when I hit the space bar key, next costume, so green flag, go to costume one, space bar, I'll take it to costume two, space bar, again, costume three. And then you can see that would be dead easy to make a traffic light sequence up here. Just got to switch to the different costumes, put a weight sequence in, and you can make yourself traffic lights simulating. Now this was far, far easier to do and get kids interested and get them going than trying to do it on here. It was it, it, it was as easy as they could make it, but it just wasn't easy enough. So I'll just try and show you the same thing on this. Need a glass 
So uh, we're okay now. Well, you know, <laughs> this is what I use in the schools, right? The one, the one, one, one gigs, you know, netbooks. Now they're compromising schools, but two hundred pounds means you can get two of them for two laptops. Yeah. This is primary school, and I've overloaded this one with every piece of software that I've ever heard of. So, so you get on here. This is how you control this. And you can do it simply manually. I can switch an LED. Oops, let's connect it. Tell it I'm connected. So I can switch LEDs on. Let me work this away if you watch it. <laughs> yes. And you've got the motor, and I've widened the motor. Need some WD-40 hasn't been run up for a few years. Sorry. But obviously you could have a fairground ride, you could make something spin round, take it up to your DMC project. And this is what this is what they did. And it's all good stuff. But you're looking at one of these units, I can't remember, but of the order of hundred pounds just for the hat hardware, and then all your LEDs and everything on top, plus your computer. So we have the computers, you know. Um, one of the schools bought six of these, and luckily I could go around and take them to each school and do my sessions with them. Because I get a lot of kit in schools, and then people go on courses, and then they stop using them, and I, I grab all the music. And this is the way you program it. Um, I've got a screen resolution issue here. I wonder how I'll get around that. Is there an auto button on the projector, Martin? Mm, no. No. Okay. There's two ways of killing the cat, isn't it? See, on this, this is how you do in flow group. So, output, click on that, and you put it there. You say, say, switch output six on, and then we go process, and we can wait one second, and say, output again, switch output six. Off. Wait one second. I haven't used this in about a year, so I'm really hoping. And then you have to tell it. Ah. So it's immediately gone wrong. This is equivalent of a syntax error trying to do Python to primary schools. This, if a syntax error has curved from scratch, it'd be dead easy to get out of it. And I'm actually, he says, starting to think, I don't know how to get out of this. <laughs> so I'm just, oh, luckily you've got out of it. But it's not too bad, you've got the general idea. Do all that, hopefully we'll press run. <whistles> Never do live programming in front of an audience, that's what I <laughs> Okay, so it's not too bad, right? <laughs> But I tell you, when you get into starting to do the traffic lights, particularly when you start getting the flashing crossing man, the the flow chart starts disappearing off the screen, and it is it, it just it, it's not hard, it's not hard, but it's not as not as easy to use as Scratch. I mean, it's it's very very good for what it does, and it does different levels. I have it on the basic level. You can go up to different things. I don't know what they do, but it, it, have you ever used it in high school? Not this particular one, there's something else called uh, Flow All. Um, well, this is Flow All, this is yeah. the, they, they call it Go, they changed the name of it, yes. The Pig Logic K2 is another thing that's yeah. kind of similar. There you go, but that's that. But as you can see, what it is, it's all nicely set up though. Lovely program, though. I mean, even to the point of this, where they have aces. So I can download the fairground one. Okay? And therefore, you can simulate, and this is how I got into using Scratch. Somewhere on this screen, there will be an ace, but I don't know where it is. All that stuff. Thank you. Oh, it's on my screen, just not on yours. Ah, oh, there we are. So, they came up with this, and therefore you can connect the ace and run the program as well. Connect that. 
Yes. So because these are limited, but the whole class can do the, you know, so we'd all use the ace and program up the sequence of lights. You want to see what they can do with these lights. They have been doing all sorts of tricks. And it's quite spectacular once they get it going. And that's, we did more and more of that. And then I would sort of get the top project out and plug it into here. That was the prize at the end of the lesson. Whoever had the best display, we'd run it on that. Because most schools only had one or two of these. So you couldn't do it to the whole class. Because it was just too expensive to buy. Right. So there's scratch. Scratch, as the things, like I say, when the space key is pressed, let me do the traffic light specific work. You'd say, um, next costume, wait one second, looks, next costume. I will make a syntax error now in scratch. And the only thing you can do in scratch is put the block in the wrong place. It's like you've made your Lego model up, it doesn't work. All you've got to do is disassemble it and rearrange it. And I haven't found anyone yet you know, who, who can't do that, so that's why I like it so much. How do you know that's a syntax error? I was trying to say that was as close as you... Sorry, it was, it was a... Uh, it was a, yeah, a semantic error. A semantic thing. You know like when you're doing real programming, you make syntax errors, your program collapses in a heap. Yeah, well, that, that's it, nothing. No, that's exactly. That's not syntax, that's the only mistake you can make in Scratch, it's impossible is to put the blocks in the wrong order. Uh, like on the flow chart. So how, how would you know it was the wrong order? Having never used it, I don't, so how would you know? If I, on your, on let me show you, <coughs> right, let me, let me show you, I'll do a little bit more advanced here. Costume no, 1, we'll call it red. Okay, costume 2, we'll call it amber. Okay, and just let, let's make that one red. Green. <laughs> this is why I wanted you to talk to <laughs> Right, so that's more like what I would do. I mean, even then I haven't finished because I'd obviously have red and amber, yes? And I'll actually have all off as well because if you want to do flashing, green. Green, okay, thank you. I'm a programmer, not a. Right, so let, let's go back to our scripts now. So, when the things, let's go to there. We will switch the costume. Green. So we're going to assume the lights are green when we want to start. we we'll hit the space key. We don't want to do next costume. We will do switch to costume. Amber. Wait one second. And then switch to costume. Red. Okay. And you could believe me, you could have a red and amber costume and back to green again. So that's what we would do. So this is what they would do. They would just have an amber, a red, a red and amber, and that's all they need is those costumes. And then when you hit the space key, it goes like that. And then I would pause it for five seconds, put the red and amber one back on. What I'm saying in Scratch, it's, it's hard to make an error. And the worst error you make is you get the blocks of the wrong order. And all you've got to do is put them back is in the right the order again. Well, let's not get into that. Um, okay. Uh, That's the latest version you can download. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a 2.0 two on its but way, but this, this yeah. is current Scratch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is our, what I'm saying is, that's what you're doing in Scratch. Great. What you haven't got in Scratch, of course, is controlling your Raspberry Pi. So here we come to the meat of the demonstration. I, Raspberry Pi comes along. It's got um, it's got scratch built in. Now, you might think, hang on here, he's not got any wires, he's cheating. I'm just VNCing in. For those of you who haven't done this, VNCing is geeky, but it's a really useful thing to get on your Pi. So once you've got your Pi set up, I really recommend, if you can, or download it off the internet, setting it up so that you can get a VNC so you don't need your 52 inch plasma plugged in at home because that's the only HDMI device that you've got and the kids are getting a bit sick that you can't get on their Xbox. So as soon as you've got it set up, now don't do this to me, don't do this to me. Is that telly work, Martin? The telly's not, no, no. The telly's not working. Okay, plan B. 
be ready. The problem with the tie is, if you, if you didn't have the HDMI plugged in when you switch it on, it doesn't do anything without the HDMI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Simon, just repeat what you were saying then. The problem with the Pi is, you said about it being switched on. It boots up the HDMI drive if the HDMI support is connected. If you lose the fan, the port is connected, it doesn't boot so much, so you can't plug it in after it's powered up. There's a reason right. for that to say power, so if, you're not, if you don't have HDMI, it's not powering yeah. it all the time. What it should do is have an intro, so when HDMI is plugged in, it automatically boots the drivers and then it starts working. But you know, it doesn't really have a hardware intro for the USB. So. Right, I think plan so. B is going yeah. to fail. <laughs> <right? laughs> <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what is going to be what plan C? Plan C is trying plan A again. Luckily, some of you did see this working earlier. Although it would, it would be very nice to demo it. I'll just wait for the pie to reboot. Has anybody used the other display adapter, the coaxial socket on the Raspberry Pi? Yes. If yeah. you have to change something config, don't you? I did. I had to change the old scan to get it to fit in. Right. However, if you use uh, the media well, sensor, I know what I didn't do. The built in function to actually adjust the resolution right. so it fits perfect on the screen. Yeah, I know what I did wrong, so yeah. all right. But if you plug it in I run here to a TV work. and just switch it on, you, you yeah, get you nothing. If I drag the TV across as you want, the TV's not doing anything. All right, so no, 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 I just. I just need to I need to um, actually connect to the Pi in the first place. It says I don't know who you are, mate. I'm not letting you in. Before I did the VNC. Here we go. Can I talk for a minute, Simon? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. We're there now, so we're all right. But you can talk. While I'm working. At the at the Cambridge Raspberry Jam, which I know Simon loved watching, you you were saying you loved the quality of the sound and everything from that. It was marvellous to behold. We had a presentation, which we've got a video online now <coughs> by Andrew Robinson of the University of Manchester, and he talks about an, another alternative where you can control hardware using Scratch, using this Pi Face product as well. Yeah. And that's that's something else you can. Well, have this is. The, I'm just going to show you the basics, yeah. and I'll come talk about the basics. Right. That screen there is my Pi, as you can see. Okay, so with the advantage of Pi, now this is all prototyping stage, um, Scratch will not control the pins on a Pi. So the Pi has got a whole load of hardware pins directly that you can output signals to that you don't have on a PC. You used to have on a PC with a parallel printer port, and people used to do tricks in the old days with parallel printers. Port 378. Sorry? Port 378. Port 378, whatever you say. Show your age. But we don't do that anymore. So, uh, but the Pi has the, the basic connectors on it. So, if I run a, a Python program, now this Python program sits there. Want to connect to Scratch? It basically Scratch could be set to send it what's happening with Scratch out on on the internet. And obviously, when I say the internet, it's sending it to one two seven not dot not dot one. And if you're a real geek, you know that means this machine itself. Yeah, itself. So it's just sending data to itself over over the internet. You think, well, that's stupid. It's just a very easy way of communicating between two two different programs running on a computer. Um, so the, this program. Now I cobbled this together because I just um, I, I wanted to put on the on the shoulders of giants. Ben has written the, the driver software so you can talk to the GPIO pins from Python. So he's written them in C, run a little Python library. I can just say I put GPIO pin 17 on, and it and it goes on, and I don't have to worry about that. So there's other people who've written Python programs who could listen to the Scratch broadcasts and do things, and I just match the two together. I nick the code off the Pi Face people because they're university types, you know, doing clever stuff. But they they were way ahead. And I just wanted to show you could do it without buying anything else whatsoever. So there's my Python programming running. Sorry about the screen resolution size here. 
Let's run up Scratch on the Python. I'll be back on the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Now, hopefully you'll see this. It's a little bit slower um, than running it on a PC, but we are we are doing this headless. If I was if it was direct HDMI out, it would be a you know a bit quicker anyway. It's having to send the whole screen headless. But the advantage of this is that if we were to build this into a robot, or as a, then we could just talk to it over Wi-Fi. This is code I have baked earlier. As you can see, if you used to Scratch, you can see this is slow. And basically, this is all you have to do: turn on in Scratch remote sensor connections and that means Scratch will listen to stuff coming in on the internet, local internet, and it will also broadcast anything. There's commands in Scratch called broadcast. It's normally like one sprite says, you move now, and it's broadcast move now, and the other sprite says, when I receive, yeah, there's commands there. So you'd have two instances of Scratch at all, one on your PC control on it? Yeah, people have done this, oh, this is what they originally did, they had two Scratches on the local network and they could send it over the network and they could play two player, multiplayer LAN games or, you know, not generally on the same machine, but you could, yeah, it's much good, but it hung. It hung, yes, yeah. it wasn't very good. Um, now, but here we are now, and hopefully, if I can have the lights down as the same goes, yeah. And uh, so on the green flag's now pressed in Scratch. Just do a quick test sequence there, just to prove my IDs are working. And I've made it on here. I've I've taken the GPIO pins. There's eight generally available. When I say things like there's eight generally available. There are a lot more, but there's eight anyone can use, like it didn't like me. I've configured four as outputs, four as inputs, and I've put a button here on my little board, and I press my button, and let go, it starts going through the traffic light sequence. Amber, red, come on, red amber, green, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what I've done. Now, I'm at the stage here. Could I have, could I have two more minutes, please? Because this is the big, because I've got people here that are interested. Is, <laughs> what do we do with this? One of the problems, let me show you. You see the Scratch thing at the bottom there, that green bar? Everything's flat out. The Scratch program's sitting there going, is anything happening? Anything happening, it's in a loop. The Python program's in a loop, right? Waiting to see if there's any input changes. Thank you very much. Okay, it's a 700, a 700 meg computer, it's not running very fast, you know, Martin was the first one to point out, saying, is this going to be fast enough, Simon? So my aim now in life is to try and get things as fast. Now, what I really want is Mr. Scratch over in MIT in America to embrace the Raspberry Pi, incorporate it directly into Scratch 2.0, and, and, you know, I'm not needed, or people like me aren't needed at all. What, what we'll need for that is a standardized board. The GPIO on here only drives a few milliamps. You can connect a few LEDs, you know, no chance of connecting a motor on. So we're gonna need add-on boards to do this. Now, there was this GERT board. Have you heard of the GERT board? Have you heard? There's a guy, the guy part of the foundation anyway, and he was building the, 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 the standard input-output board. It's taken some time. Those people can't wait around. Ada Fruit, I was shown up there. They've made boards. Other people have made boards. The guys at Manchester University, they've made their own Pi Face board. And they've all put um, bigger chips on it, relays, wires you can plug in. So it's become very fragmented. Now, if the GERD board comes out and the foundation and they get the economies of scale and you can get this board for 10 quid, then I think it's probably going to be the runner. But if they can't, I don't know what's going to go on. But the Python programming will be trivial. Just tell, you know, whoever, whoever brings out their board, as long as it's open source and all of them are so far, then 
right of the pipe, this bit of it should be dead easy to do, and we should be able to emulate something like that. But then I'll need someone to build a plastic box like that, so I can make it dead easy to use. I'll then make sure data harvest don't sue me for you know, product design things. Maybe I can sell it to people. Maybe they can get maybe they can get data harvest on the job. Uh, I don't know. So it's a shame the pie face people aren't here because they've been, you know, working at a much higher level. Um, Simon, yes. You know the person you were speaking to. We did that. You gave you the case. It's the Sukin yeah. yeah, he's got a board for about fifteen pound of a breadboard. Yeah. It's the yeah. box if you want. It's dead cheap, about fifteen oh. quid. Well, you call dead cheap. I call five pound dead cheap. I don't call five pound dead cheap. I work in primary school. I don't. I don't like fifteen. He gets the case. You get you get the case and the breadboard into fish about fifteen quid. Hello. But what's going to be needed, I think, is if we're to get these, if we were to get the scratch people on from America, I think we'd have to say this is the board mate. They've done it, they've, they've worked with Lego. You can get a We Do kit add on to Scratch. That costs 70 quid for a basic kit. I don't want to pay 70 quid for a basic kit. You know, I want, I, I, you know, I don't know. I think if I could do the whole lot for twice the price of a pie, I think that's, that just seems right to me. You know, $35 for the pie, $35 for the, for the bit. Now, other people have done, if you worked in Arduino, there's uh, some Italian lads, uh, People did it about two years ago. They hacked their own version of Scrap, Scratch Control and Arduino. So they've directly done it. And the Scratch people don't mind you doing it, but you can't call it Scratch afterwards, and they won't let you share the projects on the, on the website. So they control the name just like the foundation control Raspberry Pi. So there's issues there and everything like that. But anyway, that's if you wanted to get your kids on, or anybody, basically doing basic input output, that's all it takes. There's tons of Python programs around to do things, um, and I've done stuff on a blog, which you can follow and see. Can you tell us about your blog? Because you've got some little YouTube clips of what you've done, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, so what I tried to do was, this is what I did. This is the simplest method of getting Scratch, blinking some LEDs. <coughs> Simplesci.wordpress.com. Spelled the same way. Yeah, with a CY. But you, you've, you've never seen the advanced stuff, so. The, the journey of my last two weeks as I was going through.